It's not me, don't worry, it's Bill. But I haven't looked at the camera yet, Tony. Does that look like it's pretty, like, uh, yeah, we're good. Looking good, All right. pretty man. Yeah. Is anybody joining or am I just on my own? Do you see anybody? You look on your own right now. Oh, well, it just said I just went live. I need to share this. Bill's coming in. I'm, I'm going to share this to my uh, Facebook page. And let's see here, Facebook. And there's the man of the hour. Hopefully he won't beat an hour. Oh, it's, Phoebe Smith. Okay. Uh, Charlie... Charlie Rowe? Yes. Hey, yank, Charlie. Make sure y'all hit the share button. Um, I'm about to share it myself. And, Bill, you can come on in any time you want. Sandra um, Beard. I'm sure Charles is watching in. Deanna Williams Quinn. That's what your shot's going to look like if Teresa you want to see Sanders. it. But, uh, Teresa says you look great. Well, uh -huh. thank you. Lori Green's <laughs> joined us, and so is Chip Liner. Oh, Chip. Hey, welcome, yes. Chip. Oh, Chip. Oh, well, you Chip. Hey, it. Chip, you better stay on. We got a special something here for you. I'm putting Bill in the... I'm, I'm sharing it right Yo, now. Yo, now the scene looks really good here. Come Santa Claus here. Come Santa Claus. And we'll go. We're, we're still sitting gonna, on the stage. You guys you guys hit the share button because we're going to start in about 30 seconds. Here but, uh, comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. He's yeah, the latest rage. Yeah. That's me. Hey, that was good. That I was went from an man. angel to Santa Claus in just a matter of two or three days. Okay. Hit the share button, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. about to share it as hey. well here. I'm you. in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Come on, thing. I'm trying hey! to get... Hey! Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. And I've had nothing but uh, three cups of coffee and a Coke this morning. So, yes. And no sleep. So, you know, that's always a good thing. So. Hey, that's true. No sleep. Santa Claus cannot uh, sleep. I do. Uh, we're going right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, I just got a card. It says, with special thanks at Christmas. Whoa. The holiday season is the perfect time to thank you and let you know how much you're appreciated. Merry Christmas. Love, Chip and Dale. I mean, Chip and Judy. <laughs> uh, not the chipmunks. Okay. Uh, and they were nice enough to send a, uh, send a gift. So I'll see what it is. Let's see. Maybe it's a, a, you know, a, a souvenir album of all my sermon manuscripts for the last year or something. Other. I don't know. I can't wait. Okay. Uh, so nice. Hey, it's not an album of my sermons, but look what it is. It's an album of uh, the, the cross pictures. Yeah. Oh, wow. These are the pictures that we've been using on the, uh, the calendar for the last couple of years. So, Chip and Judy, thank you very much. This is great. Good. Good. I, I appreciate that. So, you know. That's a, that's a nice gift. That's a nice gift. So, okay. Well, hey, uh, I am ready to go. I just want to make a couple of announcements. One, the weather looks uh, like it's going to be horrible here, so we're going to have our Christmas Eve service inside at 5 o'clock uh, Thursday. But if you are at home, you can still watch it on Facebook. We'll have it posted on Facebook. But if you're going to be at home and watching it on Facebook, if you live locally, if you want to drop by the church, you can pick up one of these communion cups that has the piece of bread in it and, uh, you know, just the pull-off tab, and you can actually have communion uh, with us as we have communion here at the church. So there will be a basket of those just outside the church office door uh, throughout the day. We'll have to take them inside at night because they'll, they'll freeze. But uh, if you want to come by today, there, there is a basket out there. And uh, so I encourage you, you don't have to be a member to participate, but that would allow you to, to join us for uh, the, uh, the service, okay? Uh, so I want to talk to you about communication. Uh, in fact, you know, I've struggled this morning with communication because I read a post on Facebook which just really lit my fires. And I, uh, I typed out a response, and Michelle was saying, you don't want to send that. You don't want to send that. So guess what? I listened to the woman's voice, and I did not send that post. But communication really is important. And I, I think as we communicate, the greatest tool we have is the use of symbols. In fact, it's really hard to carry on a conversation without using symbols. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to say a word. You can just, uh, for instance, this, this hat is, is a symbol of Santa. 
And uh, even if I didn't tell you that I was wearing this thinking about Santa, you would look at it and you would get the message. And you think about things that are just packed with symbolism. Uh, the, uh, the American flag, uh, the uh, power fist, uh, the, uh, the cross, uh, little uh, things, uh, phrases, uh, under God, uh, the uh, posting of the, uh, the Ten Commandments. And when you use those uh, symbols, you don't have to say anything else. And you can then say, well, I didn't mean anything, or yeah, I meant a whole lot. Well, let's, let's see how we can really use symbols in a good way. And Jesus was a master at this. He used symbols in a way that uh, brought people into his message that he was delivering. For instance, when he talked to the disciples, many of whom were fishermen, and they were probably struggling with how to be a disciple. All of us do that, especially when we first began. So Jesus said that they were to become fishers of men. And that symbol, they had put their nets out so many times in the water and brought in the fish into their boats. So it simplified what they were supposed to do for Christ. They were to be fishers of men. He used another analogy involving animals, and that was sheep. Uh, you know, what, what are we to do as Christians? He said, well, you're to be sheep. In other words, you stay close to the shepherd. You obey the shepherd. You trust the shepherd. You depend on the shepherd. You follow the shepherd. And so those symbols, and right now, if I held up the symbol of a lamb, you would immediately identify that with, with our role as Christians. And uh, a picture of a fish that identifies us with the responsibility of Christians. So in the last Passover meal that Jesus observed, uh, there was unleavened bread on the table, there was wine, uh, and he reached out and took the bread, which we call a loaf, but actually it was just a, 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 a sort of more like a flat piece of bread. And he broke that. And the symbolism that he used was, this is my body. And he was saying to the disciples, my body is about to be ripped open and broken. And so the... The bread was a symbol for what was going to happen. He also used this bread as a symbol of his body to remind each one of us that we have the invitation to be one with him. And in the New Testament discussion, you know, as a member of the body of Christ, you might be a finger, you might be a hand, you might be an eye or an ear, uh, a foot, but he's saying we all have a part to play in the body of Christ. So a tremendous use of symbolism. And then he took a cup of wine. Uh, and uh, as they were drinking this wine, he held the cup before them and said, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin. So he identifies himself on that last Passover as the lamb that the Jews would sacrifice for the Passover meal. And he identified the blood with the blood that the Jews had used to mark their doorpost at the first Passover following God. But he took the, these symbols and made them Christian symbols so that now we think of the cup of wine and the loaf of bread as the elements for the Lord's Supper. Now, you've been watching me and you know that I intentionally have a Santa's hat on my head. 
And I'm going to encourage you that if you attend the uh, Christmas Eve service here at Grace Works, if you happen to have a Santa's hat, wear it. Now, there's nowhere that I've ever read about what I'm about to say, so I think it's original with me. But if I borrowed it from somebody from eons ago, then I, I uh, give my thanks to them and uh, give them, uh, you know, the uh, acknowledgement. But uh, think of the Santa hat. It is a, uh, a symbol that pretty much is owned and controlled by the world, whether it be a Coca-Cola product or, uh, you know, an M&M product or whatever, but Santa belongs to the world. But what if we take it as Christians and do what Jesus did at the Passover? We claim this for our own. And let's start with the white ball that is at the tip of the hat. Now, I don't know if you can still see, Michael, is this image still visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, this white ball represents the Son of God, who is perfect. So, because he was perfect, he came to the earth to die for our sin. Now, the red of the hat represents the blood of Christ, when he died on the cross, his blood poured down. His blood became the sacrificial blood for the Paschal Lamb and became our redemption. And his blood, because he is perfect, makes us white as snow. The lining, the uh, collar, uh, the brim of the Santa hat. And notice how wide it is, and no matter which direction you look at it from, all the way around, it is white as snow. A reminder that Jesus Christ, when he died on Calvary, made it possible for us to become pure like him. And pure like him, we can inherit the kingdom of God and walk on the streets of the new heaven. So, uh, my singing's not that great, but I want to conclude with this, this one of my favorite little choruses. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Father, thank you for the cleansing that we have through Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that we will wear Santa hats or what other symbols we have and proclaim the real reason for the season the birth, death, and resurrection of your Son for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Merry Christmas, folks. God bless you.